good. Okay, that turned out really well. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Pipes Fishing. Now, today we are going to be doing something a little bit different. Now my hope for today is that we'll do a catch and cook, which admittedly is nothing new for this channel. However, the interesting part and the unique part about this video is that the method I'm going to be using to try and catch a fish is not with a rod and reel, it's actually with a spear. So I'm just going to quickly show you the gear I'm going to be using and give a little bit of background about spear fishing here in BC and then we'll get right into the fishing. All right, so. The first thing that I've got here, which is kind of the most quintessential piece of gear for spear fishing, is a spear. And this here is just a regular kind of three prong pole spear that I bought in Hawaii. And I do have some experience spear fishing with this in Hawaii, but I've never spear fished with this or spear fished at all here in BC in my home province. So this is going to be completely new for me. And then also what I've got here is I've actually mounted the camera on here as well to try and get some interesting angles. So I'm very interested as to if this is going to make things, you know, a lot harder because that definitely weighs the spear down a little bit. I don't know if it messes up the balance or anything. Um, but for anyone who is unfamiliar with a pole spear like this, uh, basically how it works is you've just got this little um, kind of rubber band section here and you just wrap it around your hand like so and then hold the spear like this. And once it's like this, it's basically cocked, and as soon as you release your hand, it goes firing forward like that, which underwater is enough to spear fish. And on the end, it's just kind of got like a three-prong little bit of spearhead here. Now, on top of this, I've got a few additional pieces of gear, which I'll just quickly go over. I've just got some wetsuit gloves here. I don't have a full wetsuit, just the gloves. These just kind of help with gripping the spear, and it kind of keeps that rubber band section from cutting into your hand right here. And then on top of that, I've just got totally normal flippers and snorkel mask. This is just like regular snorkeling gear. I don't have any special, um, you know, spear fishing or free diving equipment for this. And that's all I got here. So I'm going to try and get in the water now, see if I can't get a new fish. One thing I forgot to mention is that both the weather and the water were uncharacteristically cold for the Okanagan in the summer, which put a bit of a time limit on how long I'd be able to stay in the water with no wetsuit. Luckily, it didn't take long for me to get eyes on a nice sucker fish that I wanted to shoot, but unfortunately I wasn't able to get close enough for a clean shot. later, I ended up right in the middle of a school of what I think were red-sided shiners. They were far too small to try and shoot, but it was still a really cool experience. After what felt like ages, but in reality it was only probably about 15 minutes, I finally got a clean shot on a sucker fish. which I proceeded to completely miss. On the bright side, the camera that I attached to the spear did provide a really cool angle for all of about five seconds. The problem was the joint connecting the camera to the spear was just too flimsy. And so when I shot the spear, there was just too much drag from the water and the camera got pulled way out of angle. In future, I'll try and remedy this because I did really like the angle that the camera provided before it got knocked out of alignment. As the dive progressed, I did get a number of other shots on both pike minnows and sucker fish, but I wasn't able to get as close as I usually like for any of them, which made for some quite difficult shots, all of which I missed. It wasn't long before I started to feel cold, and I knew I wouldn't be able to spend much longer in the water. I decided to go up onto the boat launch and have a look there because I knew I'd seen sucker fish there before. This is a bit risky because this is a pretty heavily trafficked boat ramp and so I made sure to keep an eye out that there was no boats coming to use it. And it didn't take long for this risk to pay off 
as I almost immediately got a nice shot on another small sucker fish. Which, once again, I missed. Luckily, his buddy decided to stick around and give me another shot. And I wasn't about to miss three great shooting opportunities in a row. I quickly dispatched him with my dive knife, and then it was time to go to the water, because I was nearly shivering cold at this point. Alright guys, so I'm pretty chilly because I stayed in for a lot longer than I wanted to without a wetsuit but I did get one and it's just a little sucker fish right here. Bit of a smaller sucker fish than I hoped to get but you know what, by the end there I was getting pretty desperate, pretty cold and there's plenty of these guys around so it's not hurting the population or anything but here he is. Just get close up here. Now one piece of gear that I did forget to mention earlier when I was going over gear is um, right here. Got a dive knife, which is what I use to dispatch them. It's also got a little fish stringer here, which comes in handy if you get more than one fish. But yeah, I'm pretty excited to eat this guy up. I was gonna fillet him. I might still do that because there's a lot of bones in these guys apparently, but he's pretty small, so I also might do it whole. I'm not totally sure what I'm gonna do, but for now, I'm just gonna get this guy on the ice so the meat stays nice and fresh. I've already bled him, and yeah, I'll see you guys back in the kitchen to cook this guy up. All right, guys, so got this nice little sucker here bit small, but I think it'll fry up nice, and that's what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to just gut this guy, and then I'm going to cook him whole, and fry him up, and just kind of hope all the bones and stuff kind of dissolve, so that I can just kind of crunch through them all. Actually, this still has a structural integrity. I kind of messed this up, kind of skipped a step, but what I'm going to do, I've seen people scale fish. I forgot my scaler. I've seen people scale fish with a fork, so I'm just going to try that and see how this works. I reckon the bones will just kind of get kind of crispy. You can just bite through them, because I cook, cooked other small fish like that. I'm not really worried about the bones, and it's worked quite well. Alright, now we got this open like so. Get all this out. All right, so I've got this guy kind of rinsed up here now. I'm just going to take the head right off like that. And it's not the prettiest thing in the world. It's actually just kind of bone right here, so I'm just going to kind of cut that out as well. Oh, this is a chunk of bone. But there we are. Nice little sucker fish. Maybe I'll take this uh, fin off. well do the fins like that and uh yeah i'm just gonna maybe coat this guy in flour i'm not actually sure if we have flour but if we do i'll coat this guy in flour and just uh stick him in a frying pan all right guys so i actually was unable to cook this guy last night which is when i caught him just because some stuff came up so i'm actually cooking it this night so it's just been sitting in the fridge overnight and i just gave him a quick rinse and so now that he's all rinsed up and clean he's ready to go for me to prepare him to cook him so just to start off here all i'm going to do is cut some slits into the fish because i'm going to be cooking this guy whole I'm basically just going to be coating him in a little bit of flour and then i'm going to not really deep fry him, but just fry him in a film of oil so he's nice and crispy. Okay, so now I'm gonna prepare my kinda, I don't wanna call it a breading mixture, it's more of a coating mixture. I'm just gonna get a little bit of flour, just like so. To that flour, I'm just gonna add a little bit of this mustache seasoning, really just any seasoning, it's fine. I'm just get a little bit in there, 
And I'm just gonna add some regular table salt as well, just to get a bit more salty, because I'm not sure if that mustache seasoning is going to be enough to flavor this whole fish salt-wise, even though it's a pretty small fish. I'm just gonna give them a little mix around. Might have put a bit much flour there, a bit too much, but that's all right. Now I'm just gonna take the fish and just really, really work them into the flour here. Oh yeah, I use way too much flour. Maybe I'll use this to make some dough bait or something so I don't waste it. But just seeing, totally coating all of the fish inside and out. And so this guy should get nice and crispy. All right, let's get the oil heat up and get this guy right in the frying pan. All right, so now I'm just gonna get a little bit of this canola oil in here. Like I said, I'm not trying to deep fry this guy. I just want to get enough so that the bottom of the pan's coated. And I know I just said I was gonna use a frying pan, but I'm actually just gonna use this little pot because it's the perfect size for this. It's gonna keep me from needing to use too much oil. In order to see if the oil was ready to uh, throw this stuff in here, I kinda just added a little bit of water to the flour that was left, and then I just drop in those little bits, and you can see it sizzling straight away. So that's telling me that this is ready. So I'm just gonna get this fish in here and hopefully it'll sizzle nice and good. Oh yeah, that's perfect. All right, guys, I'm gonna try and keep the heat low so it doesn't splatter too much. But this should be good. All right, so I think I might have overheated this oil a little bit because it looks like it's burned a tiny bit there, but not too bad, honestly. So I just turned the heat down a little bit and I think we'll be okay now. So one thing I've just been doing here, guys, is just kind of flipping the fish pretty regularly here. I think that's keeping it from burning, so that's working pretty well for me. All right, guys, I think we're about done here. It's looking real nice and crisp. Maybe a tad bit overcooked, but check that out. So I just got a plate with a paper towel here. I'm just going to, oh no. All right, so ignore that blooper there, guys. And uh, here we go. It's actually looking quite nice, real crispy. I think I'm just going to top it with a little bit of extra salt, give it kind of that nice chip-like flavor. Just let it cool here for a little bit. But I'm actually, this guy smells pretty good, so I'm excited to give him a go. All right, just going to add a little bit of salt here. Because I think when you got food that's kind of fried like this, a little bit of extra salt really helps make it taste delicious. There we go. All right, guys. So I got the sucker fish here. He's all nice and cooked up, kind of crispy-like. I'm going to give him a little taste test here. Now, like I was saying, I'm hoping I'll be able to just crunch right through these bones because there's a lot of, like, Y bones and stuff in here. As you can see, I kind of ripped a little section off here. I'm going to give it a go. Okay, that turned out really well. So there's not very much flavor to it fish-wise. It kind of just comes out as like a plain fish, which is perfect for this because it's just a nice little fried fish. But the frying worked quite well for the bones. I really didn't pick up on any of the Y bones or even the ribs because that bite there I was eating, as you can see here, just right through the ribs. So that was a really, really solid method to get around these bones. I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. All right, guys, so as you can see here, I totally polished this guy off, and honestly, my expectations have been really subverted by it. So it was really quite delicious. I mean, I definitely did choose a method that kind of played to the strength of this fish, because it kind of allowed me to disregard the bones, and also it wasn't like the most direct method just for getting the flavor of the fish. But considering all the bad things that I've heard about suckerfish and eating suckerfish, I think this turned out really well. So if you guys haven't tried it yourself, you want to try suckerfish, maybe you've caught some, maybe you want to try spearfishing and there's a lot of suckerfish around, give it a go guys, it's a ton of fun. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video, I really appreciate it, and it was super fun to make. You know, if you guys like these spearfishing videos, I certainly love making them, so if you like them, maybe leave a comment, leave a like, let me know what you like them, I'll try to do more like them in the future. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.